Hello guys, how you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and welcome to my review of Match Day 3 of Euro 2020. The group stage has concluded and the knockout stages kick off tomorrow. This is when things get very, very exciting. First of all though, we are going to go through all the games that occurred on Match Day 3. And at the end of this video, we might get a little sneaky prediction for all the uh, knockout ties, all the last 16 ties. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off in Group A then, where Italy made it 3 wins from 3. Pasina's goal in the 39th minute was the goal that separated them from Wales. A game overall that didn't really mean much. Ethan Ampadu was sent off, which I thought was very, very bloody harsh, but uh, unfortunate for him that he's going to miss the next round. Switzerland also qualified and condemned Turkey to their third defeat out of three. A 3-1 three win, that's a lot of threes in that sentence. 3-1 three win for Switzerland against Turkey in Baku, where Jordan Shakiri scored twice and Seferovic actually scored a goal for once. Not a single point picked up by Turkey in this group and to say they didn't even meet expectation is the biggest understatement of the evening to be honest. They were just awful weren't they? I don't think there's anything else to say about that. Fair to say they bought into their own hype. Onto the games in Group C then and despite Ukraine losing to Austria thanks to Baumgartner's goal both sides qualified for the last 16 and Holland qualified after topping the group with another win a 3-0 win over North Macedonia thanks to goals from Memphis Depay and a brace from Jeannie Wijnaldum and it's probably their most convincing performance to date. Onto the incredible last day then in Group B where Denmark, despite not having any points in their opening first two games, qualified in incredible circumstances, finishing second in the group thanks to a 4-1 win over Russia and very much thanks to Belgium's 2-0 win over Finland. Finish on goal and Romelu Lukaku got Belgium's three points and made it a maximum nine points out of nine for them. But there was a lot of drama in the other game in Copenhagen where Damsgaard gave Denmark the lead for a calamitous error let Poulsen in to make it 2-0. Zuba with a penalty then responded to make it 2-1. At that point then it was still 0-0 in the other game and I think Denmark were still going out at this point. But then an absolute rocket from Andreas Christensen. Champions League winner Andreas Christensen. Made it 3-1 to Denmark. What a strike and who knew he had it in him? I certainly didn't. An unbelievable goal by Christensen. One that we have actually tried to recreate in our Euros recreations that we recorded yesterday. We actually recorded two recreations episodes so they'll both hopefully be out next week. Fingers crossed, it'll be down to how much time I have and how quick I can edit, essentially. Mela then made it 4-1 and wrapped up a wonderful win for Denmark, and thanks to Finland's defeat to Belgium, Denmark qualified. It portrayed everything beautiful that we absolutely love about football. These Danish players have been through the absolute trenches so far in this tournament, but they've come together as a group and they've pulled through, and I've nothing but pure admiration for them, and I really hope they can go even further in the tournament. So well done to Denmark. On to Tuesday's games then in Group D and England once again managed a 1-0 win over Czech Republic with Raheem Sterling once again getting the goal as much of a tap-in as it was. It was put on an absolute play for him by Jack Grealish who stood out with his performance as did Bukayo Saka. Again, a solid 1-0 England win but once they got their goal, particularly second half, they sat back and I know it pissed off a lot of English fans and I know if I was English I probably would have wanted my team to once we've gone 1-0 up seeing the Czech Republic are very much there for the taking and maybe knocked in two or three more goals to raise the confidence and raise the belief amongst the players and the fans in particular but they got their goal and second half they just kind of sat back and it was a little bit disappointing to watch to be honest with you. Speaking of disappointing to watch Scotland were knocked out 3-1 by Croatia at Hampden Park. Nikola Vlasic giving Croatia the lead before a brilliant strike by McGregor made it one all but that was fairly short lived thanks to a brilliant goal by Luka Modric another one that we've tried to recreate in the recreations episode coming out next week keep an eye out for it and and an Ivan Perisic header wrapped it up and knocked Scotland out. So once again, three teams from that group progressing. England, Czech Republic and Croatia. On to the final day of fixtures then. And Sweden picked up an unbelievable win over Poland. And it was a game that had drama right up until the final whistle pretty much. Emil Forsberg put Sweden into a two goal lead at the hour mark. Before a brace from Robert Lewandowski. When we talk about one man teams. This is very much the physical embodiment of that. <laughs> Made it very very nervy for Sweden indeed. But it was a 94th minute winner from Klassen. That won the game for Sweden. They go through and Poland are sent home. Also in that group, Spain qualified with a very comprehensive 5-0 win over Slovakia. An incredibly ridiculous, one of the most ridiculous own goals I've ever seen from Martin Dubravka gave Spain the lead. Aymeric Laporte made it 2-0 just before half time and it's fair to say the second half floodgate certainly opened. Pablo Sarabia making it 3-0. Ferran Torres with his first touch after coming on for Alvaro Morata makes it 4-0. Then an own goal by Kuchka makes it 5 and from that point 
went on with 20 minutes left it was very much just a case of Spain strolling to victory and it's the first time that I've genuinely been convinced with Spain in this tournament obviously it's the first time they've won a game so that kind of makes sense on to the final games then in the group of death then group F and this was quite unbelievable it really was Germany drew two all with Hungary at the Allianz Arena Hungary even taking the lead through a brilliant header from Adam Salai and then Champions League winner Kai Havertz <laughs> I need to stop this. I need to stop this. Kai Havertz drew them level and then less than like a minute and a half later, Hungary were back in front thanks to Schaffer and it was a terrible, terrible mistake by Manuel Neuer. And then in the 84th minute, Goretzka with a brilliant finish, little deflected one into the corner, made it 2-2 and made it safe for Germany who finished second in the group. There was no lack of drama in Budapest either between Portugal and France, but were we really expecting there to be? A Cristiano Ronaldo penalty got us underway before a very dubious Karim Benzema penalty made it 1-1. I'm still not convinced Mbappe was even near fouled by Nelson Semedo, but we moved. Just after half time then Karim Benzema then grabbed his second of the game before another Ronaldo penalty, again a little bit unfortunate for the French defence. He tucked it away to make it 2-2 and send Portugal, France and Germany through to the last 16 of Euro 2020. And I have to say, fair play to Hungary. Despite being knocked out, they really put up a good bloody fight. But being in that group, it was always going to be tough against those sides. But to manage to get a draw out of both France and Germany, Hungary can go home with their absolute heads held high because they were brilliant. And that was the group stage. And we now know who will be facing who in the last 16 of Euro 2020. And to round off this video, I decided let's do a little prediction and see how wrong we are. We already predicted a couple of bad ones in the uh, group stage. Turkey, I'm looking at you, he is fucking bottle jobs. The first tie is a very tasty one indeed. Wales versus Denmark. I've been very impressed with Wales once again. I didn't really big them up that big going into this tournament. I did kind of say something along the lines of, oh, they're not the same team as they were back in 2016. But they've been really, really good. And despite not scoring a goal yet, Gareth Bale has produced some unbelievable performances. I honestly have no idea which way this one is going to go. I'm going to say Wales will knock out Denmark. Gareth Bale can produce a world-class performance like he did. I think it was against Switzerland. I think Denmark could be in trouble. But they have lots of top top quality players themselves Denmark they've showed they have that togetherness as well game two Italy versus Austria Italy Italy have got to win it haven't they they've got to win it surely they've been quite possibly the best team at the tournament so far Austria have been kind of meh so I'm gonna go with Italy Holland versus Czech Republic now I don't think this is as you know clear cut as a lot of people would say, but I do think Holland will win. The Czechs rarely, really threatened England the other night. I just think Holland have too much standout quality for the Czechs, in my opinion. In my opinion, lads. It's an opinion. Oh, God. Belgium versus Portugal. Oh, God. Who's going to win that? Oh, I have no idea, lads. Belgium have definitely been more convincing, I think it's fair to say. The Denmark match may be a side. Obviously, there was a spell of like 10, 15 minutes where Belgium turned that game on, it, on its head against Denmark. Oh, would they beat Portugal, though? Oh, boys, I don't know. I feel like that one's going to go to penalties, you know. Portugal will win it. I've gone with Portugal to win the whole tournament, so I'm backing them. I'm backing Cristiano to not only save Portugal, but my fantasy team continuously. Croatia versus Spain. Now, Croatia are a side that have really grown into this tournament, haven't they? They've only gotten better as time has gone on. And you could argue the same can be said for Spain, probably in a more drastic sense, with a 5-0 victory after not even winning a game up until the final match day. Spain are well capable of beating Croatia and Croatia are well capable of beating Spain. Mm, let's state the obvious, Aaron. I'm gonna go with Spain, but I wouldn't be surprised if Croatia won it either. That's what I'm gonna say. France versus Switzerland, I'm going to say France. Fairly self-explanatory, really. There could be a shock on the cards, but I doubt it. I really doubt it. England versus Germany. This is the one that a lot of people are looking forward to the most. It's on Tuesday at six o'clock at Wembley. It's gonna be absolutely electric, lads. England have been solid and they've been getting by, but they've not pulled up any trees. The boring's been a the, the boring's been a little bit football. <laughs> That's unbelievable. The football has been a little bit boring. Let's be honest. The first, we'll say the first half of the Czech Republic game aside where Grealish and Saka were absolutely running the show. I think England overall have been about average. Germany are so unpredictable. You don't know what Germany you're going to get. They struggle to get the win over Hungary. But yet they battered Portugal in the game before. So it's really hard to know. I'm going to go with Germany. I'm going to go with Germany because I did always say in my uh, predictions before the tournament that I think whoever England face out of Germany... 
Portugal, France. I don't think they'll beat. And I don't think they're going to beat Germany. I could be proven wrong. If it happens, yeah, and England do beat Germany, please come back to this video and clown on me as much as you want. Also, while you're here, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the Euros. We're not that close at the minute. So all help is very much appreciated. So, you know, share it around, subscribe. Also put on the bell notification so you get your notifications every time I upload. Yeah. Anyway, self-promo done. Let's move on to the final prediction then. That promo wasn't even scripted or supposed to be in there. Sweden versus Ukraine. Both of these sides have actually had good tournaments so far. I've actually been quite impressed with both, I have to say. And again, it's one of those, it's a bit of a toss of a coin. I'm gonna go with Sweden to win it. Because they have that star quality in the likes of Isak. I'm not saying Ukraine don't, but I've been very impressed with Isak. He's still yet to score, and I still believe he will score in this game. That's my thoughts. So yes, lads, that is my reaction to match day three and my predictions for the last 16 ties. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. As I said, subscribe if you're new. Keep an eye out for next week's videos. We've got hopefully two goal recreation episodes coming out. Fingers crossed we can get them out in time. But um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Hope you guys are enjoying the tournament as much as I am. And yeah, good luck.